Hello guys and welcome to another episode of my ability system series. In the last one we set it up so that we have our skills assigned to hotkeys and when we press the key or press the button here they will be used. You see a little print text there on cooldown and our mana is reduced. Today we are actually going to add a little bit of logic to our skills so that we can have animations playing and also particle effects showing up so that our skills can finally do something rather than just printing out a string. To start, let's create a basic particle system for our Flame Nova spell. So what we can do is go into the start content folder and under particles you will find the p underscore explosion. I'll just duplicate that, call it p underscore Flame Nova. And let's expand the skill systems, blueprints, skill actors. Let's make a new folder in here called effects and move the flame nova into that folder we just created. Then of course we have to make some adjustments so it looks a bit different, more like a real flame nova. So I'm going to keep the fireball and the smoke. I'll remove the other emitters here. And we of course need to scale that up because that explosion is really small. So first off we want to make it larger. To do that we will go into the fireball, spawn then to the burst scale distribution, set the constant to let's say 20. Yep, that should work. Another thing I'd like to do is increase the size. So let's go to initial size, open that up, and let's set the maximum to something like 120 in X and 80 in Y and Z. And for the minimum, we will go for 100 in X, and maybe 60 in Y and Z. What you might notice is that currently the fireball or our flame nova is extremely dense. We can change that by going to our sphere and expanding the start radius, distribution, let's maybe bump that up to 200. Then let's go to the smoke and here we will also go to the spawn, burst list and set the count to let's say 47 or 50 or something like that. Then we will go to the lifetime open that up here, minimum will be 0, maximum 2 and finally we will also go into the sphere here and set the constant to 200. Alright, that's looking better now, so we can save this effect and close it. Then I will go to the skill actors and open up the master skill. Here I want to add a variable called skill animation and we will make that an anim montage reference and we will add another custom event here which we will call on skill notify when we reach a certain point in our animation we can call that to launch the effect to deal damage and so on for now let's just add a print node here and copy that from our on spell cast where we get the name Alright, save. Then let's create a macro that will handle playing the animation. So let's just call that play animation. We will give it two inputs. The first one will be an execution. And if you don't want to see the name of that execution here, you can just type in execute and that will disappear. For the next parameter, we will use an anim montage. So that will be the animation that we need to play. Call it something like animation. And let's give it two outputs, both executions. First one we will just call then. So here it will also disappear. And the second one completed. I will show you in a second why we need that. And the first thing we will need to do is open up a runtime category, player reference, and let's call disable movement from the character movement component. After we disabled movement we need to stop movement immediately just in case there still is a movement command right now. And then off of our player reference or let's maybe copy that over let's call play and a montage. 
and the montage to play will obviously come from my input node here. After we did that, let's go into a sequence. And for then zero, we will just go into the first execution of our output. So this will fire di directly after we gave the command to play the anim montage and the completed we will just use when the animation has stopped playing already. All right, to do that, you can just add a delay node and off of the input animation, we can get the sequence length. Plug that in for the duration. And one thing we also have to do is re-enable movement. So play a reference, copy that over and set movement mode of the character movement component to be walking. That's how you re-enable movement. After we did that, we can go into the completed output and that's it for our macro. Back in our event graph, we will go to the on spell cast and drag in our skill animation. Check if that is valid. If it's not, we can directly go into the print string node. But if it is valid, let's play animation with our skill animation connected. And once that's completed, we can go into our on cast completed. Pardon save. Now we need to set up our animations to actually have a skill notify when something should happen. So let's close our master skill and go to our characters folder, animations, tags. Let's use attack 01 for our first spell. And you will need to scroll down to see the notifies. And here you can add a notify. But let's quickly search for for place to add that. Maybe here. That's frame 65. So just right click, add notify, new notify and call that skill not. And we can save and close our attack animation. And for our flame nova I will use attack 06. And here again, we need to find a place in the animation when we should launch the actual spell. Maybe here, when she raises up her hands, scroll down and add a skill knot. Now that will appear since we added it recently. Close it. But we also need to figure out a way to tell the current spell that the animation hit the notify. And how you can do that is just go back to your animations folder in the NMBP. Because here, when you just search for skill knot, you will see an event and a notify skill knot. And let's also search for initialize animation. Basically, that's event begin play for NMBPs. And here we will just call try get pawn owner. So the actor that runs this animation blueprint, cast that to the skill character. And if that cast was successful, we can promote that to a variable called character ref. And then on our anim notify skill notify, we can get the character reference, get the current spell, and check if that's valid. If it is valid, what we can do is simply off of our current spell, call the on skill notify and that's it compile save and can close the nmbp now let's check if that's working so let's go into our cane side spell and let's give that the attack 01 montage pile and save and if we play now and hit f6 casting our cane side will only appear when we hit that skill notify and while we cast our spell, the other ones are disabled. All right, so that seems to be working. But for our Flame Nova, we also want to have a particle effect playing. And since all of those AOE around the player skills will work in the same way, we can just create a child blueprint class of our master skill and call that skill underscore AOE. Open that up. And in the skill info, we can just set the target to area around self because we already know it will be that. Let's also add one stage by default and just give it an area radius of let's say 500. That should work. 
Another thing to do is give it a variable called particle effect. And make that a particle system reference. Can remove event begin play, tick and so on. We don't need that. What we need instead is the on skill notify that we will override here. And what we need to do here is spawn emitter at location. The emitter template will be our particle effect variable. And to figure out the location, let's just get the player reference and get actor location. Plug that in for the location here and we get that emitter playing then. Also we need to worry about detecting what the spell hit. To do that let's just do a multi sphere trace for objects. Our player location will be both the start and the end. And to figure out the radius let's get the current stage. Let's break it and we only want to show the area radius. Connect that to the radius. For object type, let's search for make array and we only want to trace for pawns so that we don't hit static objects in the world. Check trace complex and for actors to ignore, let's make an array because this spell here is, an, is a different actor than the player character. So ignore self won't work and we don't want to hit ourselves with spells. So let's get the player reference, connect that. And for debugging, let's just select persistent debug type so we can actually see that. Compile, save. Then let's delete our flame nova and create a child blueprint class of our skill AOE that we will call skill underscore flame nova. Open that up and let's go to the class defaults. Particle effect will be p underscore flame nova. Skill animation will be attack 06 montage. And the skill info name will be flame nova. Search for the icon here. So flame icon flame nova. Go to the stages. Stage 0 and let's give it a damage of 50, though we don't use that right now. Just set that out of the way. Damage type magical. Cooldown, let's say something like three seconds. Casting time, we also don't need that right now, but I'll just set it to 1.4, because I checked and that is approximately the length of the attack 06 animation. Mana cost, maybe 50. Area radius 500 should work and the rest we can leave at zero so compile save this and we need to add that to our starting skills so let's open up the skill character and here we've got our starting skills and the second element we will set to skill underscore flame nova compile save and now when we hit f7 it will play the animation launch a particle effect and you see the collision volume that it will detect to see if it hit anything. And the animation also works for our other spell. Alright, thank you for watching and in the next episode we will add a little casting bar to see how much time we still need to spend casting.